Okay, so welcome to this week's video. Uh, this week I've been sent this, which is the AC200P portable power station with the PV350 solar panels for review from Bluetti. So for those people that don't know what these are, this is essentially just basically a power storage unit. Inside here are your batteries, will also be an inverter and a power supply which gives various different outputs depending on what it is you want to power. This particular model has got a power output of 2000 watts and a capacity of 2000 watt hours, but we'll come on to the capacity in a minute. Okay, so before we get going setting this up, we'll just run through what we've got on the front here. So we've got the, the power button, conveniently labelled up power. We've got a 12 volt DC output, at 20 rated at 25 amps. We've got a, a DC output, which is a, a standard car type battery um, output there, rated at 10 amps. We've got another one here, which there's two of those, uh, which are rated at 3 amps. Also got the um, 60 watt um, Type C charging port, and we've also got some USB charging ports. And probably more importantly for me, we've got two 230 volt standard UK outputs. And then on the front, we've got a touchscreen display. So there is a pure sine wave inverter fitted in this for these 230 volt outputs, and the outputs are selectable. Uh, between 50 and 60 hertz depending obviously on where you're living in the world on the side of this one we've got two inputs for charging this one can be used for solar or you can select 12 volts to um, charge it from your car and then this one will be your input from the AC adapter supplied okay so a couple of things on this so there's a 24 month warranty on uh, this unit the actual weight of it is about 27.5 kilograms okay so the solar panels Okay, so this is the, the PV350, called 350 because there's a maximum of 350 watts power you can get out of these. Designed obviously to be portable. Okay, so on the back of each solar panel is a little pop out support. And to connect the solar panels, your cable just come out of there. And then all you do is just plug it into the side here. Okay, so we're going to get this set up outside, see what output we can get from the panels. Okay, so we've just got the panel set up, just propped against the wall there for a minute. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning, so not exactly full sun yet. And then we've got about 160, 165 watts and 43% charge. Right, so it's now 20 past 11, so we'll just have a look and see what we've got so we're now getting 200 220 watts now at 51 percent charge okay, so we're now at quarter to one Have a look. 280 watts roughly and 68 percent charge Okay, so 20 to past 2, about 300, well, I don't know, 20 watts and 87% charge. So we're now at quarter to 4, it's already charged, not quite sure when it was fully charged, but yeah, there we go, all done. Right, so before we get into um, doing any load testing, I want to talk briefly about the rated capacity of the unit, which is this one here, this 2000 watt hours. I think there's many times there can be a slight misunderstanding of what people expect versus what you actually get. So hopefully this will um, help people in future when trying to decide which unit you should actually purchase. So in this particular instance, we have got a rated capacity of 2000 watt hours. This is what the batteries are holding when fully charged and correct. So by rights, we should be able to plug something in that draws 2000 watts, and it should be able to power whatever we've plugged in for one hour. However, while we might have 2000 watt hours available in the batteries, that's not what we're going to get out of here. Okay, so I'll try to explain. So, as previously mentioned, the unit has got a battery in it. Or batteries, I don't know. And these are supplying DC, which is direct current. And in order to get this 
to AC we need to use an inverter so we've got DC going in on one side and then we've got the AC coming out the other side and the AC is what you use in your house power your fridge freezer washing machine whatever so unfortunately as with any process there are losses and after looking through the specifications what they're saying is the output here has got a rated efficiency of 88 percent so this means we've got 12 percent losses from the inverter and most of this comes off as heat so if we start off with 2000 watt hours of power this means what we've actually got to play with after this conversion process is about 1760 watt hours which is what's available here from your AC output and that is a realistic capacity of a unit so we should also note that the unit has got some protection in it and that protection is built in to protect the batteries now this protection cuts in when these batteries are 10% at their capacity so that 10% means when the batteries are down to 200 watt hours is this will shut down to protect the batteries to ensure that it doesn't flatten them and end the life of the battery so again if we take away our losses on about 200 watt hours that then gives us 176 watt hours realistically of what it would have meant on this side and then if we take that away from the 1760 watt hours we're actually left with 1584 watt hours which is what I expect to be able to get out here so what we'll do now is we'll take the unit at 100% um, charge and then we'll see how far out those basic calculations are just before we do that, you should note that the 2000 watt hours, if you're using the DC side, so anything over here, those losses from the inverter aren't going to be there. And the losses of transferring the voltage or whatever the batteries are sat at to 12 or 5 or, or whatever are going to be minimal. So you're going to get pretty close to that. Okay, so one of the things I do use in the workshop quite a lot is this um, type of dehumidifier here. This is a desiccant type of dehumidifier and it uses about 700 watts or it gives out about 700 watts of heat as part of a process of taking the moisture out of the air so it's about just 430 now this is 99 percent you can see that okay so what we'll do is we'll put this on to full power and then that will be pulling around about 700 watts and then we'll see how long that lasts bearing in mind there's no obviously input um, from it from the solar panels normally the dehumidifier would run for about two two and a half hours per day in the winter and I just use it to provide a little bit of background heat in the workshop as well so let's turn the mains on Okay, so while that's going, if you're just wondering why I use this type of um, dehumidifier, it's because it's a desiccant type, which means these can run at um, quite low temperatures, like quite happily take moisture out of the air at 5 degrees Celsius, whereas um, the refrigerant type won't normally really take anything out at less than, I think it's about 14 or something like that. So, And these also kick out a bit of heat, which in the winter just keeps the, the chill off the workshop as well, and keeps everything nice and dry. Okay, so we've been going for just about half an hour now, so we can see what we're doing. So that's down to 76%. Alright, so we're just at a two hour mark now, so we should be pretty much nearly flat on the foot. So yeah, about 3%, so let's turn that off. Okay, so the dehumidifier was drawing about 758 watts of power. And the unit was nearly flat after the two hour period. So two hours, 758 is 1,016 watts. 
and we can see that the unit had 3% left in it so I would say the 12% loss rate in here is probably pretty spot on actually if you factor in the 10% protection which was over here okay so the one way you can charge it is solar which is via that and then the next way is via the DC input here and the supplied power supply so we'll just plug it in and see how long it takes to charge right so while that's charging off the mains you might say well isn't that an expensive way of using it in comparison with solar and yeah it is but for me it still works out cheaper because what I've got is two rates of electric so I've got a day rate and a night rate so if I put this on a timer and leave it to charge on the night time on the lower rate it still works out cheaper for me to do that and then reuse the electric back in the day when the higher rate tariff is applicable one of the other things I can think of using these for is the, uh, one of the schemes in the UK which is becoming quite popular is load shedding so that's where suppliers turn around and pay you um, basically to unplug and turn off as much as you can so what you can do in the winter is you can have one of these fully charged and then when they turn around and say you'll give you a notification we want you to take the loading off the grid is you unplug most of your items you plug them back in here uh, which it will take the load in most cases TVs refrigerators and stuff like that and then you carry on as normal but you get paid for the benefit of doing that Okay, so yesterday I put the solar panels out, topped it up to about, I think it was about 70% or something like that, and then last night I put it on charge um, on the lower tariff of electric and then topped it up all the way to 100. I've got a few things there I'm going to turn, just to see how long this can last. At the moment the lathe's plugged in and it's on, so at the moment there's a load of just under 70 watts. So that's the inverter in here which is taking that power. So I'll just turn the lathe on, which will be under minimum load, see how you put it pulls. So just about 200 watt, so that's just spinning by itself. Okay, so that's one turned, so it's down to 92% now, I'm also charging my phone as well at the same time. Okay, that's two. We're down to 85. Right, so I'll finish turning for today. And I'm going to just try and see if it will power the hoover. So it's more about the starting current more than anything. And yes, it will. And it's just a one kilowatt load there. Okay, so we know it will run the lathe, but will it run the lathe and the dust extraction at the same time? Because that's probably the, the maximum load I've ever got at any one time in a workshop. So just so you know, there's no jiggery pokery going on. So this is the the cable from the lathe and then this is the cable going from the dust extraction so we'll start the lathe start the extraction okay so we'll just do that again so we'll start the lathe you can see how many watts the lathe is drawing with. Then we'll start the extraction. Okay, so we'll just quickly run through the display. So the top one up here is obviously your solar or your um, car charging input. This one here, anything kind of a DC side, which is, if I turn that on, uh, will show up there. Anything on the AC side, which is the two power sockets will show up there and then when you're charging it from the adapter it will show up there okay so thanks to Bluetti for sending this unit out certainly the start of me taking the workshop off grid loads of uses I can think um, for one of these and probably many more that I haven't um, I've left a link in the description to our website should you wish to take a look and as always thanks for watching